church family. It's Sunday, October 9, 2022. And we're so glad you've joined us for service today. We're so glad you're a part of what God is doing in our local church and in our community at large. We've been so blessed like going through the Carpenter series, learning about the foundation of our faith, why we believe what we believe, and even how to share our faith with others. Personally, I've been so excited to learn about a structured approach to what God has in stock for me, my faith, and how to share my faith with my world at large. It's been awesome. Growing up in a Christian home, I've always believed and done whatever I was told without necessarily asking questions. But as I've gone through the Carpenter series, I recognize that the concept of ongoing repentance is important. And that has increased my awareness and consciousness of the presence of God, such that I can go back to Him often in complete dependence on Him as I walk with Christ in my day-to-day -day life. The teaching on salvation spoke to me in a very special and personal way. Even though I've been saved for a while, I have never appreciated the sacrifice of God in such a vivid and graphical form like was presented by Pastor Phil. Even though Christ was tired on the cross, He didn't come down and it kind of revived in me a new awakening to serve God even in times when it's convenient for me and times when it's inconvenient. I have been really blessed by this message. So now it's time to worship the God who has given us the opportunity for ongoing repentance and giving us so much grace and the benefits of salvation. So whether you're online or in the building, get up on your feet, be excited and join us in this awesome time of worship and word in the presence of the Most High God. Welcome, Welcome to church!
like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of the symphony to my ears. It's like holy water on my skin.
transformation. I'm about transformation, not behavior modification, not like looking and acting like a good person and doing the right thing at the right time, but transformation, complete, utter change and renewal from the inside out. I'm looking for people that aren't just nice people, but people that are set on fire by my spirit, washed by my blood, changed and radically set free, radically saved and prepared for the service to which I've called them. Utter transformation. Understand, the only way you can abuse my grace is by not using it. It was poured out to be used, not to be admired from a distance like a museum piece. It's meant to be used. You live in a parched land and walk among people who have the parched cells, souls. That's what my grace is all about. Pour it out. Pour out the transformation that's happened in you and watch it do things nothing else can do. It was meant to be used. So go all in. Put it all in there. Take that plunge. Take a chance. Because I have given you several free gifts, and those gifts I want you to take and I want you to open them. And I want you to experience them and want more of it. It's okay to be gluttonous when it comes to my gifts because I want you to be sated in them. I want you to be so full that you will then be overflowing and others will see it too. But for, for now, just jump in there. Take everything you can. Experience it all because I'm pouring out those gifts and I'm ready for you to receive them. Like the sound of a symphony in my ears, like holy water of my sin. Your forgiveness is like sweet. He wants, to, he wants to drench you in shame and guilt. He wants to make you feel bad about what you've done. And he wants to make you think that God doesn't have room to forgive you for the sins, but his grace, God, where sin abounds, his grace abounds even more. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. But the song says that your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like it's the sound, the beautiful sound of a symphony in my ears. It's like holy water on my skin. God, we thank you for how sweet and how precious your forgiveness is, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, only Jesus. Lord, we're, we're so grateful for who you are and what you've done in our life. You've been so kind, so gracious. Lord, I look at my life and I, you've been so good to me. God, how can we not just bow down and worship you and give our lives to you? You're so awesome. You're so wonderful. You've done everything for us. You care so much about us. You have great things in store for us. God, how can we not just give our whole life to this, this God who's done everything? With joy and delight, Lord, we remind you again that we love you so much, that we want to serve you, we want to live for you. We want to fulfill the call you've placed upon our lives. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus, we love you, Lord. And it's in that precious, powerful, wonderful name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Are any this morning with the word of knowledge? Please come to the microphone. Someone's got pain in their in their jaw and throat, and it's making eating especially uncomfortable. And uh, if you're not familiar, the word of knowledge is simply a gift of the Holy Spirit, where God is moving. He moves. He's moving. He's alive today, and He wants to move and heal. And so we gather around. We reach hands out toward or lay hands upon, because that's our biblical instruction. Till he hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's our biblical instruction. So maybe you're online or you're here, and we just want you to know that God wants to move on you right now. Amen. God, first we thank you on behalf of these that identify yes. with this, that you have called this issue out. We have identified it because you are here to heal. And in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, these Lord. issues must bow. They must surrender to the creator who restores and makes all things right. And so let that happen now in the yes, mighty Lord. name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. There's someone here with a broken nose, maybe online too. And God wants to heal that. He's broken, been broken possibly as well. And uh... Lord, thank you for what you see. Lord, thank you that you have brought this attention to our attention. Lord, yes, Lord. and you see each person here suffering. And we speak to cartilage that it will be healed. We speak to these noses that they would function at 100%, that you would restore that function which was going to be lost would be brought to your original intent in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. 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 Last one. That last song talked about standing, standing amazed. And I, what God spoke to me is there's people that can't stand up as long as you want to. Um, perhaps lower back or knees. Those are the two things. But um, it's distressing to you, and I would love to pray for you. Thank you God, Lord. we thank you so much that you care about all things. Yes, Lord. We know that you are capable. We know that you poured out your, your son's blood yes, Lord. to heal. Thank you, Lord. So right now we stand with these and we lift them up to you and we speak a recreative word to the source of the problem. We speak, we speak strength where there is weakness. We speak a looseness where things are too tight. God, we, um, we stand with these and we believe that you're gonna do something brand new so they can stand longer, so they can raise their hands and stand and praise you. Amen. Amen. Well, as you return back to your seats, greet someone you don't know, give them a high five and say, isn't Jesus amazing? All right, everyone. It's good to have you here on this beautiful Sunday morning out there. <clears throat> I want to give a couple of quick uh, announcements that I have. On Wednesday, 
the, the, at, the, at the ladies' retreat, we have one of our founding pastors who's going to be speaking, Pastor Sherry, uh, he was Carrie's mom, and uh, will be speaking at the uh, conference. Also on Wednesday, her husband, who, which was a very strong mentor in my life, um, uh, helped me walk through a lot of things in my life, Kevin Hunter, is going to be speaking Wednesday. He'll have about a, about a 30 minute presentation. Um, so I'd love it if you would come. It should be a really, really fun time. Pastor Kevin, like I say, is, a, is, is one of the main mentors in my life. And uh, so I'd, I'd love it if you could come and, and listen to him. Um, I think he'll do a, an amazing job, and it's going to be an amazing week having both of them here. So that'll be exciting. Also, uh, remember that we have notes. If you don't have notes, either raise your hand and usher will probably get them to you, or go back to the back table. You can get a pin back there too. If you take a pin, remember to put the pin back so we can use it again next time. But uh, back there, pick up notes because I want to make sure that you uh, have good notes for what we're going to go, go through today because it's going to be really, really enjoyable. Let me send it right now back to our online greeters. Well, thank you so much for being here. If you're new with us, please fill out a Connect card. We'd be happy to get to know you. You can drop them in the offering boxes at the cross aisle or bring them back and see me after service at guest services. It's behind you over your right or left shoulder, depending on where you're sitting in the auditorium. But we'll be back there, and we'd love to meet you if you're new here with us. So definitely make sure your hands are up if you're needing those notes. We also posted the notes online. So on Facebook chat and on YouTube, um, we post a link. You click on that, and then it brings up all the notes and the RTT at the end. And then if you're registered, you're going to click on a Zoom meeting that we emailed to you and chat with me afterwards. But I'm really excited for today because we have a ton of people that have been joining us online. You know, we have people that join us regularly from Alaska, California, Arizona, but right Right now, we also have some people coming from uh, uh, coming and watching us right now from Puerto Rico, which I think is just awesome because so we cool. just have people over there. And so um, we're excited. We're a church that's not just here in a building, but we are a church family that's just global, and it's amazing. You know, if uh, work is going to endure, it needs to be built with um, precision, with care consistency and constancy and that personifies our senior pastors pastor phil and pastor carrie they've uh, labored with love to put foundations in our lives that will last and today pastor phil is going to continue that tradition today as we engage lesson three would you please put your hands together and welcome a man of god pastor phil vance all right <clears throat> Well, welcome everyone to the Carpenter Series 101, Building Your Faith. This is lesson number three on water baptism. Remember, our tagline is building our lives to be more like Jesus. And he was connected to God. That's our 101, building your faith. He was connected to people. That's our 201, building the church. And he was connected to his calling. That's our 301, building your ministry. And we should also be connected to these in that area. That's why we're teaching this series. This one's on water baptism, one of my favorites. These next two are my favorites, okay? I, honestly, they're all great. They're all wonderful. They're all life-changing. This is a favorite, one of my favorites, because it changed my life. I remember, um, as a matter of fact, I was just rereading my prophecies for my water baptism. One thing that's cool about water baptisms here is there's a prophetic word that's usually over that person's life as well. And in, back in February 7th, 1979, uh, I got water baptized and it changed my life. And the prophecies that were said there were, oh man, I just looked at them and I just couldn't believe the things that I was reading that I walked in and I'm walking in today because they were laid down because God had a plan and a purpose for me that I didn't know. I was, I was still shaky about all this, and it talked about putting the heart of an evangelist inside of me that I'd be talking and helping people. And so I, I'm just so, so thankful for what happened to me in the waters of baptism. It was powerful, and I encourage you, if you haven't, do become water baptized. The second point of Peter's first gospel message. 3,000 people got saved after he preached this very first gospel message from Peter, and he gives us three action steps. He says, now when they heard this message, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? What are the action steps? You've 
you've preached the gospel to us. We know about Jesus now. What do we do now that we know this? Then Peter said to them, very simple, action step number one, repentance. Talked about it last lesson. And let every one of you be baptized. That's our lesson today. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you will receive number three, action step, the Holy Spirit. We'll speak about that next week. So what is water baptism? Water baptism is a life imparting experience for believers. It's a sacrament. They are momentarily immersed, completely underwater, symbolizing death to their pre-Christian life, then resurrection to a new life with Christ. A new life with Christ. Yeah. So what is water baptism? Water baptism is a life imparting experience for believers. It is a sacrament. They are momentarily immersed, completely underwater, symbolizing death to their pre-Christian life, and then resurrection to a new life in Christ. I'm going to be using two scriptures, the two powerful ones here on Romans 6 and Colossians 2 that are very powerful scriptures about water baptism. Romans 6. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So we're identifying with the death, burial, and then resurrection of Jesus Christ. The same thing happens to us in water baptism. We die, we go into the waters, we're buried, so to speak, and then we rise out a new creature in Christ. We die to the old life, and we're raised to a new man, a new creature. Second Corinthians says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new. Water baptism, bye-bye to old life, to old man. Hello to the new life that God has for me. That's what he's saying happens in water baptism. But it's not a dead work. It's not something we just do. It's not some tradition. Jesus was against all the Pharisees' traditions. He wasn't after just doing something just to do it. He said there's life in it. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. In John 10, 10, it says, The thief comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you life. Not traditions. I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. What God asks us to do produces life inside of us, not just fulfilling some religious tradition somewhere. God does something in the waters of baptism. Stay tuned. Baptism does not get you saved. We do it because we are saved. And Jesus instructs us to do it. Therefore, it's an act of obedience. It's an act of obedience. We're expecting him to do something, and God does it. So why is water baptism important? It's important because Jesus said to be baptized. It's the Great Commission. Jesus said to do it. In Mark 16, and he, Jesus, said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus told us to get baptized. Also, Peter said to be baptized in Acts 10. And he, Peter, commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. So we have biblical instruction, get baptized. So who should be baptized? Who should be baptized? Number one, all who repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. All who repent. Then Peter said to them, repent and let some of you be baptized. He said, repent and let every one of you be baptized. 
Number two, who should be water baptized? Those who gladly receive his word. Gladly receive his word. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day 3,000 souls were added. Gladly received does not equal forced, all right? You can't gladly receive and be forced into a baptismal, all right? Let me say this many times here. We will not force you into anything. Our idea isn't to force you into anything. You need to make those steps because it's your walk with the Lord, right? I'm, my requirement before the Lord is to teach truth, is to encourage you. Your responsibility before the Lord is to act on the truth that you believe you are to act on the truth that you believe. I'm not saying you have to believe what I believe, but you better know what you believe, why you believe it, and can point it out from Scripture, not because, well, I just don't like that. You need to find it in Scripture, and then we need to do it. <clears throat> it's our instruction. So we're not going to force anyone to do anything. Gladly received means eager, zealous, a desire to experience all that God has intended for me to experience. Now there's a difference between do I have to and do I get to? I mean, a lot of Christians are, do I have to do that? Do I have to walk that way? Do I have to receive all these gifts? Do I have to do all that? I mean, that's not the way a Christian's supposed to live, right? Jesus died and gave his whole life for us. And we're going, do I have to do that? Instead of I get to do that? You're giving me this and this and this and this. Do I get to walk this way? Do I get to be water baptized? Do I get to be set free? I mean, it's, we got to have a different mindset on how we approach it. Number three, who should be water baptized? Those mature enough to understand and appreciate the concepts of sin, repentance, faith, and water baptism. Now again, this is my instruction book. There is no... There is no biblical or scriptural precedent for baby baptism. It's not in the scriptures. It's not here. What they did was they dedicated infants. We do that here. We dedicate infants. We dedicate them to the Lord. Actually, the parents are dedicating themselves to raise this child up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's what's happening. So we need to follow Jesus' example, our biblical instructions. You see, it says Jesus was brought to Jerusalem to be presented. He was dedicated when he was eight days old. He was dedicated. He didn't get baptized until many, many, many years later. Dedicated as a baby, baptized as a man who knew and could understand and make the choice to repent, to make the choice to gladly receive, to make these choices to do that. Number four. What are pre prerequisites for water baptism? Number one, confession of my sins. I need to confess my sins. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, John, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. They confessed their sins. Now let me say this about confessing sins. When you confess your sins, confess all of them that you know. Don't go, that one, that one, that one. Uh, I don't know, I don't want to confess these other ones. Confess all your sins. You know, uh, hunting dogs, if you have a hunting dog, you know a lot of hunting dogs, they cut off their tail. So it's shorter because when it's longer, it rustles through the, the, through the uh, uh, foliage out there. It also can get stickers and briars and all of that stuff in it. So for, for good purposes and, and health reasons, they actually cut the tail off. Now, can you imagine? I know Dan has a hunting dog like that. Can you imagine if Dan took his dog and cut off one inch, and then a week later cut off another inch, and then two weeks later cut off another inch, and then a month later cut off another inch, I'll tell you, that dog would not want to come near you, right? We don't do that. Instead, cut it all off. My gosh, God's going, I'll forgive you of everything you're going to confess. Confess it all. Why don't we get it all done? I want to confess everything that I've done. <clears throat> In James 5.16, it says, confess your trespasses to one another. Confess your trespasses to one another. You know, I think sometimes we need other people to help us get out of sin. 
We need somebody. Maybe it's a pastor. Maybe it's a, 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 a respected person in your life that you know will hold you accountable. We need to be held accountable to walk out of things. We need a mentor in our life. But you need to talk to someone who will keep it private, who won't cast it out to everyone and tell everyone because they are things that need to be held uh, in secret, if you will, because you're working through those things, all right? We want to honor people who are working through the things in their life. So make sure that you're getting some help from someone who can help you walk through the things that you have repented of. Number two. We confess, and number two, we repent. Let everyone <clears throat> repent, let them repent, and let every one of you be baptized. Number five, how do we baptize? How do we baptize? What does the Bible tell us to do? What are our biblical instructions on how to baptize? Number one, by full immersion in water. By full immersion in water. In the New Testament, there is no baptism done with sprinkling. There is no baptism done in sprinkling. This is just our biblical example. <clears throat> Much water is needed. In John 3, 23, now John also was baptizing near Salem because there was much water there. Not because I needed a few drops, because there was much water there. I have to immerse this person. Number two, Jesus is our example. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Not at the Jordan. He was baptized in the Jordan. And immediately coming up out of the water. Also, if we take a look at the Greek word, the word for baptism. The Greek word is baptizo. Say that. Baptizo. It means to make whelm or fully wet. That's a definition of the word baptism. It comes from a root that means to whelm, to cover over with the fluid, to stain with a dye. The whole idea is how do you stain something with a dye? Most people don't take some dye and sprinkle it on, unless you're doing a tie-dye shirt or something or a crazy shirt. But if you want to take this shirt that is this color and change it to another color, you get the dye, you take the shirt, you fully immerse it and make sure that every fiber gets part of that dye and then you bring it out and it's changed. The idea is every fiber receives the dye. We don't sprinkle. Now it's not that something's magical about the water. The water doesn't do it, but you can't do it without the water. Jesus told us to get water baptized, to get baptized. He could have picked it something else. He could have picked prune juice, but that wouldn't have been fun. So he used water. <clears throat> so we get baptized in water. But it's, it's, it's not that the water does it, but it's a point of contact that releases our faith. We see that water, we go into the water, we come out of the water believing we're a changed man. We're a changed woman. Because of what happens in water baptism, he does something supernatural. Something happens. I come in an old man. I leave out a new man. We need to believe that. So how do we baptize? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing, baptizo, them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus' instructions. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He said the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have to realize that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are titles, if you will. They're descriptors. For example, my name, well, let me say this. My title is I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm an uncle, I'm a pastor, I'm a good guy. Well, maybe that's not a title, but but my name. Yeah, I'm a grandpa. Yes, I'm a grandpa. Hallelujah. Thirteen times. I'm a grandpa. But my name is Philip J. Vance. Those are my titles. Those are my descriptions. But my name is Philip J. Vance. So what is the name of the Father? In Isaiah 42, 8, it says, I am the Lord... That is my name. So God's name here is Lord. The name of the Son is? Jesus. 
Jesus, and the Holy Spirit speaks of the anointing. The Greek word talks about there's an anointing that happens from the Holy Spirit. The word Christ also means the anointed one. When we talk about that anointing, we're talking about what Christ does. So the name we use here in water baptism is that we say we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we do it that way. And I've given you more information in your building, uh, additional building materials at the back of the lesson. Number six, what are the purposes of water baptism? Baptism is for the remission of sins. Hallelujah. The remission of sins. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The remission of sins. Ophesis is the word here in the Greek. It means freedom, pardon, forgiveness, escaping of liability or punishment. That's the word remission here. That's what happens when he remits your sins. Freedom, pardon, forgiveness, escaping of liability for punishment. Remission means the separating of sins from the sinner. Everybody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. He separates our sins. Oh my gosh. He doesn't make you carry them around the rest of your life. He doesn't tie them to you and you're dragging a whole bunch of suitcases of all the cruddy stuff you've done in your life, of all the guilt and shame that you have. Note this, everyone. I know that there's some that struggle with, well, I can't forgive myself. God says, I took them away. You have to accept that. I untied them. No longer is that garbage, that sin, packed up in bags and go everywhere that you go because I separate sins from the sinner. Separate as far as the east is from the west. You are free. It's powerful what happens here. It's powerful what he does. I'm changed. Let them go. The problem is, we don't let go of them. He cuts off all the power of them. He lets them go. And yet we still try to hold on to them and drag them with us because I was that bad person. No, you, know, you have to understand. Jesus transforms and changes you. The past is the past. The past is gone. <clears throat> Remission, though. Now I have to do say this. It was not easy to separate the sins from you. It costs something. Remission requires death, the shedding of blood. Something has to die. Now, the Bible is so cool because the Old Testament sets up this whole concept for us. Animals were sacrificed in the Old Testament. In Hebrews 9.22, and according to the law... This is speaking about the law in the, in the Old Testament. Almost all things are purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. You see, something has to die to cover our sin. Old Testament, it were lambs. Lambs. They were sacrificing lambs. The blood God saw that covered their sin. It didn't take it away, it covered their sin. And this is so important. But now we have Jesus, his sacrifice in the New Testament. Look what it does. John has this absolutely incredible revelation in John 1, The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How powerful is that? He takes it away. Jesus died to take away our sins. That's powerful. So if you're struggling with, how do I, how do I? Jesus did it. Let him do it. Let go of them. Let 
go of them. The only one who's telling you to hold on to him is the devil because he's telling you how bad you are. Jesus is saying, let go of them because I am so good to you. And if you let go of them, they won't weigh you down and you'll be able to run faster and go further and do more for the kingdom of God without all of that baggage. That's why he has you get rid of it. That's why he does what he does. The Old Testament just covered sin. The New Testament, Jesus' blood takes away our sin. Wow, what a revelation. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission, the taking away of the separating of sins. And he says, not with the blood of goats and calves like the Old Testament, but with the blood of Jesus Christ that takes it away. Jesus died in my place to pay my penalty. Accept it. Walk in it. Your sins are separated from you. You are free. Number two. Baptism is for circumcision of heart. Baptism is for circumcision of heart. Another powerful concept. There's so many powerful concepts that we just didn't get other than, oh, I just walked to the tank, jump in, came out. I don't know what happened. Are you kidding? So much happens. <clears throat> this is an operation, a spiritual surgery performed by God on the heart of the repentant believer in water baptism. God supernaturally does something. You see, the sin nature, the stony hard heart is stripped away or cut away and it's supernaturally replaced with a new soft tender heart. And scripture points this out. Here's this other powerful scripture in Colossians 2. He, he gives us this soft heart. He changes us on the inside. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, not, not a natural circumcision like they did in the Old Testament, but in a spiritual circumcision performed by Christ by stripping off the body of the flesh, the whole corrupt carnal nature with his passions and lust. He's stripping them away from you. Thus you are circumcised. When does this circumcision take place? When does he push these things away? When does he cut these things out of my life? When you were buried with him in your baptism in which you were also raised with him to a new life, to a new life, to a new life. In baptism, he pulls out the old man and he puts in a new one, a supernatural, a supernatural act from God. The Old Testament also points this out. God knew that his people were perishing. And he says this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone, this hardness out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I'll give you something soft and pliable, and sensitive. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and you will do them. Why will you do them? Because God gave me a new heart and I want to do them. You see, if I have a, if you get a cut somewhere and you get a scab, that scab goes on there and what happens? It kind of, it kind of protects you. It's really hard and it protects you. And so if you hit the scab, it doesn't do anything. You can't really feel it because the scab's on there after this wound that you have. Scab there. Let's say, though, and here's what I believe water baptism does. It rips the scab off. It rips the scab off so that now this area is sensitive to the touch of the Holy Spirit. Your hardened heart, the scab is ripped off so that now everything becomes sensitive to the touch, to the move of God. God's taking the old stony heart out and putting in a new heart. It's kind of like this, this pineapple. We're, we kind of are like this. After Adam fell, we all became hardened on the outside. We all have a tough, hard shell, right? So what does water baptism do? Water baptism, go ahead, cut it, get it going, get it going, cut it, cut it, cut it. It cuts away the old man. It cuts away all of the hardened stuff in your life. He's cutting it away. Nobody wants to eat this. This is awful. 
we, we hate this part of it. What part do we like, though? We like the inside part because the old has been cut away, and now God has something. Can you cut me a piece there? I can. Oh, cut me one right here. Oh, there we go. Oh, move, move. Oh, gee, I, I might lose a finger. <laughs> oh, this is what God's after. God's cutting away all of the junk in your life because he's trying to get to this. He's trying to get to the sweetness, the, so the sensitivity, the softness that's inside that he is placing in there. And when you eat this, mm, oh, it is so sweet. I wish you could have some. It is wonderful. <laughs> that guy right here. Let me just give one of these. Here, because I told you to have fun today, remember? When we started, grab one, grab a piece, grab a piece, grab a piece. All right, good. Soft, sweet, yummy, sensitive. That's what God wants you to be. Don't you like yourself better when you're yummy than when you're hard? We call this a heart. No, I won't say that. Okay. Hallelujah. God got something in water baptism that will transform our life. He cuts out the bad, the old, and makes you brand new, soft, sweet, and sensitive before the Lord. He says here in Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. We're going to pass out this stuff to everyone here who would like some. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it around to you. He will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God. You will love God like never before. Water baptism allows us to love God like never before because we appreciate him, because we have a softness in, our, in, in the depths of our being and our heart to receive from God like we never had before. The old man dies. The old man dies. This is powerful. The old man dies. Say that with me. The old man dies. In water baptism, the power and compulsion to sin, the sin nature, the old man or old way or old lifestyle, the Adamic nature, the sinful inner being is dealt with and broken and it's destroyed and done away with. Destroyed and done away with. That word done away with. Cadargo. Say that. Cadargo. Catargo is what it is, I believe. Catargo. Catargo. It means to be rendered entirely idle or useless. The old man is rendered entirely idle or useless. You see, I don't have to sin anymore. I don't have to sin anymore. I don't have to sin anymore. Romans 6, let's look at this. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we're buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, because of water baptism, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, being like Jesus. Knowing that our old man was crucified. The old man was crucified. It dies with him. That no longer the body of sin that the body of sin might be done away with. That's that Greek word again, katargo. With that, we should no longer be slaves to sin. No longer whoosh, slave to sin. No longer slaves to the devil. No longer slaves to his wicked ways. No longer. You see, instead of the enemy cracking the whip at our back, Jesus has taken the whip out of the enemy's hand and made him powerless and put the whip in our hands. Now we tell the enemy what to do. Flee from me. Get out of here. He put the whip in your hands. Wow. I thought all my life, my life, I was just going to get beat up by the devil forever and ever, and then I go to heaven, everything's wonderful. No, God gave you victory here on earth. 
Does this mean you will never be tempted again? No. This does not mean that you will never be tempted again. You see, Jesus was tempted right after he was water baptized. He was tempted by the devil right after water baptism. But he didn't succumb to the temptation. You see, it means you have power to resist. You have a new power to resist and overcome temptation. I can't say this strong enough. Something happens where you go, wait a second, I don't have to just follow that. I just normally just fell into that and walked through that, got rushed away with the water. Instead, wait a second, I'm taking a stand. I don't have to do this. I don't have to put up with that. You realize that you have a voice. You can take a stand and God will empower you to do. You can resist. You can say no. He's given you a new nature, a new inner being. You can choose to follow him. You see, water baptism changes our nature, our inclination, which way we're leaning. You see, before we came to know the Lord, before water baptism, sin was easy. You know why it was easy? Because it was your nature. You were born that way. You were born with a sin nature. Easy to sin. Sinners sin. That's what they do. It's easy. Because I'm leaning towards sin. Therefore, trying to do what God wanted me to do was really, really hard. It was really hard to do that which was right. But after water baptism, he changes our lean. He changes our inclination. And now it's easy, easier to follow God and harder, not impossible, but harder to walk away into sin. Because instead of just automatically going that direction, you're realizing, wait a second, I got a choice here. Wait a second, God, God's changed me from the inside. You, you, you feel sensitive to that now. That was just something you just, because you were hard, you just went in that direction. But now your sensitivity says, wait a second, I'm sensitive to the Lord. I don't think he wants me to go that way. I think I need to do something different. He changes us. Circumcision of heart marks us as God's people. In the Old Testament, you became God's people because of circumcision, a natural circumcision. That's how they knew you were God's people. You were circumcised. In the New Testament, we become God's people because of circumcision of heart. Not circumcision of flesh. God was showing us something he was going to do that would change us on the inside. And it shows we're the people of God. Number seven. What are some of the benefits or results of water baptism? A surrender to his lordship. We surrendered, yes, Lord. We start saying that more. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God is my boss. He's my boss now. I'm not the boss anymore. What do you, as parents, try to train your kids when they're really little? You're not the, right? The kids, no, you're not the boss. Mommy and daddy are the boss. Well, mommy's the boss. <laughs> we teach our kids that, right? We're trying to teach the kids who's the boss. We also as Christians need to realize, wait a second, I got to check in with the boss. Should I do this, that, or whatever? I got to check in with the boss. What does the boss want me to do? I walk and I, I'm here at the pleasure of the president, at the boss. I serve him. In John 14, 15. If you love me, because, because he took your punishment, because he separated your sins, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus asks us to be baptized. Then I should go and make sure I've been baptized. You see, Christ is either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all, said Hudson Taylor. Is he Lord of your life? I'll tell you what. The hardest part of life is when we're trying to fight the boss, him who is all everything, right? You never win against fighting him. He'll let you win. He'll let you go your own way. But you have to understand, the boss has a plan for your life that will bring you great, great joy. If Christianity is anything, it should be everything. Give all of your life to Christ. 
give all. We did a play once where Bob Mitchell said, could it be that when I gave my life to Christ, he actually took it? <laughs> yeah, he did. He's got plans. Big, 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 big plans for your life. Remember, he's to be the operating system of your life. And you know what he's going to do is he's the operating system. He's going to go, hey, you have some icons and you have some apps on your life, on that phone. We need to delete. We need to delete some of those. Get rid of those. Some stuff he's going to clean house in. Number two, some of the benefits are a public testimony and acknowledgement. I know a lot of people that say, well, you know, my Christianity is a private. It's a personal matter. I go, no, it's not a personal matter. How do we change the world if it's just personal or private? I just worship God on my own in my own private. Well, how are we going to change the world? We're supposed to go into all the world, right? And to see it change. How does it change if it's a private matter? It only changes the world when it becomes a public matter, when it becomes a viral matter. I'm not just private. I'm not just private about all of this. <clears throat> it's a supposed to spread like something viral. I remember when I was afraid, really, when I first kind of got saved and was walking in that, I went home for break. And as I went home for break, I was thinking, you know, I'm not going to, all my buddies know me like this. I'm not going to say what I am right now. I'm just going to say positive things as we go to this bar. You know, I'm just going to go to the bar. I'm not going to drink. And I'm just going to go to the bar and just kind of be a good influence. Well, I got drunker than all the rest of them there at that bar that day. I went home and I felt so bad, so ashamed. I go, my gosh, Lord, I didn't even say anything about you. I said nothing. I said, oh, I'm going to stand. But all I did was, was flake out and I drank and I got drunker than all the rest of them there. The next time I came home, next time I came home, they were all saying, hey, let's go do it. And I go, hey, just want you guys to know, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. He's changed me from the inside out. I really don't do the bar hopping scene anymore, so I'm not going to be able to go there. But hey, let's go play some basketball. Let's go do some stuff. Hey, let's connect together for lunch. And I can tell you about my, my best friend. You know, when it says here, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. This is an important scripture. But whoever denies me, I denied him. Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. I don't want Jesus looking up there going, no, don't know him, just denied. He denied me, I'm denied. I don't want that. I want him going, yeah, I know that guy. Don't deny him. Don't deny him. When you get saved, give a public announcement. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell your parents. Tell your friends. Tell everyone. Because it'll help you in walking your walk straight anyway. You know, if you get saved here, sometime ever get saved, I want you to come up here. We'll, you, you need to give a public testimony and say, I just want to tell everyone, I got saved. And we'll give you a standing ovation. We think it's awesome. Number three. Identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We've already talked about it. The gift of the Holy Spirit, number four, next week. A good, clean conscience. A good, clean conscience. A good, clean conscience. Sins remitted. Slate is clean. It's squeaky clean. You got to understand as you go through this, and when we confess before the Lord, water baptism also produces all of these powerful things, but also He wants our heart to be squeaky clean. <laughs> It's squeaky. It's so clean. It's squeaky clean. I'll tell you, the greatest joy I've, I found is when I got water baptized, I confessed all of my sins, and I did. I felt squeaky on the inside. And you know what? Now when I mess up, I go, Lord, Father, please forgive me. And I'll tell you what, you can stay squeaky clean. You mess up, <laughs> God is so good to us. He is so forgiving. He is so loving. He is so for us at every point, even when we mess up so much. I've done it so many times. I've messed my life up. But he just forgives, sets us free, squeaky clean, and says, come on. I got a great plan ahead for you. Receive it. Number six. Reckoning that you are dead to sin and alive to God. 
dead to sin and alive to God. In Romans 6, 11, it says this. Likewise also reckon, interesting word, yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. You're dead to sin. It says reckon, you're dead to sin. Reckoning means to consider it in your account. It's a bookkeeping term. Reckon, the word is logizomai. Say that, logizomai. One, two, three, logizomai. It means to take an inventory. Webster's defines it as to count, to account, to consider in the account of, to settle accounts, to accept something as certain. You see, reckoning, and this is important, this is the biblical word logizomai, and this is what he wants you to understand too. Reckoning is a system of divine bookkeeping in which we see the debt of sin placed in Christ's account, and in exchange, his own righteousness, purity, and holiness is credited to our account. What? I think we got a picture up here about the bank account. You see, here am I in sin and impurity and godlessness, and here's Christ, he's righteous, he's purity, he's holiness. What he's saying is, reckon yourselves dead. Remember what happened in water baptism. Remember what happened when I pulled that Adamic root out of your life. Remember what happened there. And then he says, what happened there is, I took all of your junk on me, and I gave you all of my blessings and put them into your account. Our accounts got switched. Our accounts got switched. He takes all the sin and purity and godlessness, and he gives me his righteousness, his purity, his holiness. What? Who figured this up? God, you're crazy to do this. But he loves us so much. You take all the, you take all the good stuff and he takes all the bad stuff and he says, we'll call it even. What? We'll call it even? We'll call it good. That's not fair. That's, not, that's why on Sunday morning, when I get up here, I realize he, it's not fair what he did. When I'm worshiping, I'm letting him know that I love him. You're amazing. Oh, God, you're so not fair, and I'm so glad you're not fair. Because you've been so, so good to me. Other religions require something of you. You've got to do something. You've got to be something. You've got to change something. But Jesus, he just simply backs the truck up. And pours out all of these blessings upon you. He just dumps out so much for us. All he asks us to do is receive it. Today, he said, what, what was it, Steve? The, 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 the worst thing you could do with grace, you can't abuse it. How did it go, Steve? Yeah. The only way you can abuse grace is by not using it. It's by not using it. We need to use it. We need to use it. Second Corinthians, do you know what you now have in your bank account? Oh, no, no, I have this tied around my leg. No, you don't. You're righteous. You have purity. You have holiness because God gave it to you. He took all that Away, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Wow. For he who has died has been freed from sin. You're free from it. Likewise also reckon, put it into your account, yourselves to be dead. Indeed to sin. You're dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because you're dead, therefore don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness because God made you righteousness. For sin shall not have dominion over you. It won't win. You win. You have the whip. Reckon yourselves dead. Reckon yourselves what? Reckon what? 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 You are dead to that. You are dead to that. You know, if we took a body and brought it in here in a casket and we opened up the casket and I brought by pictures and I brought by money and I brought by popularity and I brought by the internet, if I brought everything by, would that dead body respond to any of it? 
Why? Because he's dead. That's what he's saying. He's dead. We're dead to that. We're dead to that. Because of the fact of the atonement, Christ dying on the cross and paying the penalty for my sins, that's the atonement. I can reckon to my account all of its benefits and reckon into Christ all of my sin. I'm to reckon that I am totally righteous before God. You are righteous before God. Number seven, rejoicing. Number eight, becoming a part of the corporate body of believers. Number eight here, frequently asked questions. I want to move it down to this as we bring it to a close. Questions we sometimes receive about water baptism. Does this mean I will never struggle with sin again? No. No. Because we have free will, free will, God will never take away your free will. You can always freely choose to do what you want to do. There is always the potential to sin, but we can know the victory over specific sin. You see, there's still a devil. He's still trying to get you to walk away from God, but he's telling you this, because of water baptism, because what he did on the cross for you, the devil has no power over you. The devil has no power over you. All he can do is lie to you. All he can do is lie, tell you a big fat lie. So don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. When he says, you know, you're so bad. Look at all these sins you've done. And no, no, did God really? No, no. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He's a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. He's a liar. Don't listen. Don't listen. Don't listen to him. Listen to God who says, I have a plan for you. I have a call for you. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You're my loved one. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. In Romans 12, too, it says, <clears throat> Let me say this before I give that scripture. We have a circumcised heart. He says he circumcised it in water baptism. Circumcised, ED, past tense, done. It's done. The problem is this in Romans 12 too. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I-N-G. Renewing, I-N-G. It's an ongoing, ongoing, ongoing thing. You are circumcised, but God's transforming you by renewing your mind. You need to think differently. You need to think differently. Renewing, renewing your mind. I have a new heart, a new nature, but my mind is still in process. But I have the power. Remember, temptation is not sin. Water baptism does not do away with all temptation. It changes your receptivity and your response to it. It changes your receptivity to sin. Before you had this big antenna that attracted sin, and when sin came up, it went, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it went towards sin. What happens now, water baptism, is that that antenna is going down, and this antenna that's sensitive, the Lord Jesus Christ, is going up. And so when God speaks, all of a sudden, doo -doo 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 -doo, all of a sudden we're attracted to the things of God. We're listening to his voice. We're realizing, wait, you're lying to me. Nobody ever told me that you were a liar. And now I know you're a liar, so I'm not going to believe that anymore. I've carried these sins around with me forever because you told me I had to. But God told me I don't have to. That's what I'm going to believe. I have a new receptivity. You see, temptations still come from your mind and body's old conditioning and thought patterns, lifestyle, habits, customs, and addictions. But we're supposed to reckon. We need to break them. How do we break all of those things? By the renewing of our mind. We have to reckon that you're a new creature in Christ, that you are dead to sin. I'm dead to that. That's not me anymore. I can't tell you how many times in my life I throw down things because there's a thought in my head. I'm going, that's not me anymore. That's not me anymore. You need to throw it down. When that thought comes, that's not me anymore. I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that. That's not me. 
Throw it down. Don't let the devil cause you to slip up because it reminds you of something in the past that's gone, that's been separated from you. If I was not baptized for circumcision of heart, does that mean my baptism was invalid? No, it doesn't mean it was invalid. I'm sure it was very precious. I, I, maybe your dad baptized you, a good friend was there with you. I'm not saying that it's invalid. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying this. But could there be more that God has for you? Could there be more in experiencing something more? For example, if you send in your tax return and you're getting $200 back and the, the IRS says, hey, you kind of made a mistake, we're going to send you back $2,500 more. Would you go, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want the $2,500. I just want my $200. That's what God is saying. I've got more for you. Do you want more? Do you want more? I've got more of God. I've got more of my presence. I've got more of my power for you. <clears throat> I was not baptized for circumcision of heart. So I'm just going to assume that I have it. I'm just going to assume that I have it. My wife sometimes gives me things to go to the store, and she'll give me three items. She knows three is a bad number. I can get two. Three is always hard. Get milk, bread, and eggs. And so I go to the store. I come back with bread and eggs. And she goes, where's the milk? And I go, oh, gosh. You know, I'm just going to, let's just assume we have it. Pour out the cereal. I'm going to pour in my milk. Oh, this is good. Oh, I'm just going to assume I have milk at my house. Does that work? No. What do I need to do? Get back in the car, go to the store, pick up the milk. Come back and enjoy it on your cereal. All right? Enjoy the milk. I think sometimes we think, well, I didn't think, I didn't even know any of that stuff. And yet God has it for you. And he's saying, maybe you should go back and visit it again and get the milk. Well, you can't get baptized again. Yeah, they did in Acts 19. They were baptized. They got baptized again. Look at the scripture. I've given it to you as a reference. And lastly, does someone need to be baptized in our church in order to become a member of our church? No. No, you don't at all. This is God's church. This isn't ours. If you know him, you want to be a part of it here, come on. The more the merrier. We love you. We have a place for you here at Living Faith Fellowship. And we love you very, very much. Water baptism for circumcision of heart. Wow, what a powerful lesson. Father, we pray. We're thankful for what you did for us in water baptism. The power that you gave us, the whip that you put into our hand, the hardness that you cut away. Lord, so much you did for us because you have great plan. You have great purpose. You have great destiny for us. Oh God, we declare we will go. We'll apply it. We'll fulfill what you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Right, that's amazing. Thanks, Pastor Phil. Whew. So you might be wondering, when is water baptism? When do we dive into this? So we've got water baptism starting up. We do it at 6.15 on Wednesday evening, 6.15 Wednesday evening, starting October 19th. We've got the first three are scheduled for the 19th, October 26th, and November 2nd. And if you have more questions about that, you can talk to your TA. You can talk to me how you get on the schedule. Uh, we'll make sure we uh, respond. To, make sure you write down on your RTT. If you're interested, uh, we'll follow up with you and make it happen. Uh, and again, we'll be meeting right down here. Me and Pastor Tom will be down here if you don't have a TA group. And then the TA groups will be meeting up in the calipers. So look for that number. Uh, and if you don't have a group or want to dive into the class, uh, please meet us right down here. We'll get you in a group. A wise builder builds carefully. A wise builder builds thoroughly. A wise builder understands the magnitude of the project in front of them and treats it with the kind of respect it deserves. And your lives built into the pattern that Christ has for you could not deserve more attention, more uh, carefulness, more devotion to the detail. So I encourage you to respond with the fullness of what Christ has for you as you engage with the Holy Spirit's putting on your heart because he's building something magnificent as he fits all of us together into the body of Christ. What a beautiful thing.
beautiful thing. If you've got a response that you have on your heart before the Lord, the altars are open and there'll be people up here for prayer. Remember, we engage God with a, a tender heart and a softness. So if there's things you need healing in your body or you just need to meet with him, we don't have to rush too quick. There's time to meet him up here. And then ladies, you know what's coming. This next week, you've got a women's retreat. So after your TA meetings, you're gonna have a, a women's retreat information meeting just here in this caliper. And they want you to join, uh, join them there for some information to make sure you're ready to go. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Put your hands together for Pastor Phil for teaching so thoroughly, so inspirationally. And then just keep clapping for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who deserves all the praise. God bless you guys. Thank you for coming. You're dismissed. What a powerful message today. I love water baptisms. We talked a little bit about it in our pre-service, about a crazy moment we had at it. And both of our stories after actually had to do with somebody being compelled, just needing to do it. And so if you guys have any questions about water baptism, wanting to get that done, please reach out to us. You can always reach your congregation by um, going onto our app and filling out a connect card that way. Um, or you can email more info at living faithfellowship.com. We are more than happy to reach out to you again. Our family is extended to yours. It's not just people here in person, but we care so much about you watching online as well. Wanted to give a couple more shout outs. We saw Clint in the dailies joined us. Um, we had so many of you guys joining over in Puerto Rico as well. And so after this broadcast, we will have that Zoom meeting for those that are students that have registered. That Zoom link was in your email. It is the same as last week's. And so please feel free, join us once this has ended. But on behalf of Pastors Phil and Carrie Vance, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday here at 1030 a.m. You have been watching the weekend services of Living Faith Fellowship a spirit-filled local church serving the communities of Pullman, Moscow, and the surrounding region. We are a group of people who love God and believe in His power to change lives. If you responded to the teaching today or have any questions about Jesus, the Bible, or how to grow in your walk with God, we would love to get in touch. If there is anything we can do to serve you, please let us know. You can connect via social media, our website, or by calling the church at 509-334-1035. God bless you and have a wonderful week.